Okay, what's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Energize, brought to you by Forge Dyer Stout. Ross, are you intoxicated or something? <laughs> Introduce the guest, man. Today we have the one and only king of Cage Warriors. It's the one and only Paul Hughes, and we <laughs> also have the main man. It's Paddy McCarry. Lads, how are we doing? The other king. You should, the you other should king. have reversed them intros. That would have been way funnier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I would have exited Lad. the interview. <laughs> it's an FAI special, baby. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is. Uh, Paddy, I'm going to come to you first. How good is it to have Paul home from Florida? Classmate, classmate. He brings a good energy about the gym and he's pushing everyone on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always are the you, hardest I, worker in the room, I can't. Are you, are you raging now that you don't no longer ha- uh, are the biggest head in, in the gym now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch I come Pat is close behind me too. Like he's a That's dark true. Horse. Pat McCaster is the biggest dome in the game, like for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pound for pound, like inch for inch, you know, like the size of him and all. <laughs> oh, stop, stop the lights. Uh, pa- Paul, tell us this. Obviously, we saw you in Kilcliffe. Uh, you've been there a few times now. What's that like? And also, uh, we, we see you randomly getting tweets out uh, from certain people saying, you know, you're the real deal and all this. Uh, I think Jared Gordon was one of the last ones. But what's it like to get, get 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 that praise on? What's it like to train out there? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's always nice to hear that, especially someone like Jared, who I really respect, has got such an unbelievable story um, and is a bit of a veteran himself. Like, so that's always nice. I mean, of course, I know I'm the fucking man, <laughs> so you don't need many people tell me, but it is nice to, to hear a veteran say that. And yeah, Kill Cliff's always fantastic. It's always nice to get working with different bodies and to be out in the sun. And yeah, it's always nice to mix it up, but it's always nice to be home as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh... You know, anytime I see the the bodies on the FIO mat, like it, it's it's like an army. Pat and Chando are building up there. It's very, very, very impressive to see. Uh, Paddy, what what's it like the atmosphere in the gym uh, leading up to your fight? Uh, it's very good at the minute because uh, there's like cage conflict. It's like three or four weeks after cage mm-hmm. work, so everyone's just getting after it at the minute. Everyone's in good shape. The sparring rounds are all hard rounds. Lots of people at every weight, so there's a rat for Eddie for all of us. So. Yeah, I'm just buzzing at the minute. Yeah, Paddy was just yeah. talking about Cage Conflict 9. Oh, sorry, Cage Conflict 11 on the 4th of November. That one's going to be an absolute cracker, Ross. Yeah, hopefully hopefully Pat sends you the Revolut for that show out there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he pulled up in the Ferrari outside. But yeah. obviously this show is an FAI special because the yeah. two lads are going to be competing at Cage Warriors 161 in Dublin's RDS Arena on the 14th of October. It's going to be live in UC Fight Pass as well, but myself and Ross will be doing a competition for four tickets to the event, so make sure to keep an eye on our Instagram page, because uh, who wouldn't be there for such an iconic night, lads? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't get paid for that either, by the way. No, you didn't. You didn't. Uh, well, if you did, I want half. Uh, obviously, uh, Paul, you're going to be headlining the event. What's it mean to you to fight uh, on home soil in Dublin? Because obviously your last fight was over in London. Uh, I know it's a bit down the road, but are you expecting to bring a big crowd? Are, are the big news crews uh, uh, come down here? Oh, for sure. For sure they are. Um, and it's it's good to be home again. You know, it's been years at this point. Um, I didn't know when the hell I would get the fight at home again, to be honest, because um, I thought like I'd be stateside and stuff soon as well. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to ha- It's This is a perfect opportunity for me. You know, I need mm-hmm. to get more fights on the board right now, clearly. And where better to have that than in home soil in Dublin, you know, it's easy for people to travel to. They don't have to spend as much traveling away to London, which is where I have been having my title fights. So, no, it's nice to be at home, and I'm definitely going to bring that energy with me. Yeah, because, yeah. Paul, every time we've seen you, it's been London every time. So, uh, it's mm-hmm. going to be great to see you back in Dublin. But uh, someone who stole the show last time, Mr. McCurry, Paddy, uh, like, first of all, that knockout you got last time in Cage Wars was unreal. But uh, the afterward, the aftermath of, like, you getting so emotional, man, I didn't think you were able to cry. <laughs> now did I now did I fuck sick <laughs> fuck sick that's terrible only when you're running up and down them stairs Paddy uh, <laughs> only when you're running up and down them stairs up and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. up by the gym that's when you cry for sure for sure 
Uh, Aiden Davlin put up right today. He put up a story and said that them steps every Tuesday they make dreams, but they break hearts. <laughs> and that is <laughs> that, that that's actually absolutely a hundred percent true. Like Baz always goes on about the FAI steps now. Like they're probably don't own by the gym now, but like that's that's <laughs> what they're known for. Um, yeah. it, it's incredible to see. Uh, Paul, I, I'm sure you're probably sick of people asking you when you, when you're fighting next, when you're fighting next, and I'm not going to lie, like, if me and Baz ever went out anywhere together, people went, any news on Paul Hughes? Any news on Paul Hughes? And big then, news. Yeah, yeah big I go, news. there's big news coming. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, you spoke with PC during the week, and I saw one of the clips, and you got to sort of tell you the truth, and, like, we'd actually spoken to Shando before about, like, you know, fighting own Murphy, going on the ultimate fighter, et cetera, et cetera. Are you just George glad Hardy. to actually get back and do your do your thing and get back in the cage? Oh, yeah. I mean, all of this, you know, this all happened. It's behind me now. Mm. The situation was just what it was at the time. Mm. We tried to, to hold out. We had good reason to believe that we were going to get the opportunity, as I stated in the interview, the, the entire mm. processes and, and my thought process behind it all. But mm. now, like, that's that's all in the back burner that mm. doesn't mean anything and to be honest it's been like that for months we told mm. cage warriors we were available for this card months ago and this has been my date and this is what i've been preparing for we only got a match up a couple of weeks ago now but this has been the date and this has been my focus and this will continue to be my focus until i get the job done next week until i finish this guy and and put on another fucking show you know and then this will all make sense you know and then just a follow up on that. Obviously, you've known this day for a little while now. Uh, how's the body uh, coming into this one? Because obviously, there was a few injuries in the past that maybe stopped one or two opportunities. How is the body in the build? Yeah, I'm, I'm perfect. I was out the first quarter of the year, as as I talked about in the other yeah. interview, and mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't know that. Um, people had maybe heard that I'd got some talks with the UFC, but they didn't know the reasons. And that was kind of my strategy was to keep mm-hmm. everything close, close to close um because people can say what they want but the truth always prevails so i had the first quarter out but apart from that i've been absolutely fine and Mm. that's like people will be thinking and and of course it has been hard at times but see if i can be in the gym and i can improve every single day and that's what i've been doing and i can see my improvements every week then (laughs) everything else doesn't really matter because i just see how fucking damn good i'm getting and i just see this is going to come to the forefront very soon and as i say the truth always prevails no, <laughs> You'll be hearing that next week. <laughs> absolutely, Paul. And look, we're glad you have finally have something booked as well. Because, like, in terms of like people like asking all the questions stuff like that, like we were privy to quite quite a bit of what was going on. Obviously, not as up to date as you were, but uh, you know, people were telling us, you know, about some of the offers and stuff like that. And it wasn't our information to share, so like we we sat and said nothing on it, but. At least that's all I'd love to open now. So, sorry to interrupt you, but I'd love to hear what you hear because there's so many different stories that were untrue, you know, that I just heard and I just let them go. So I'd be curious to know. Oh, but uh, yeah. People well, said we, you were going to evict it. <laughs> no one's <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 were, we were told Sounds you were offered gender, uh, Lerone Murphy on really short notice. We were told yeah. you were offered the ultimate fighter like two or three days yeah. before filming. Uh, yeah. Our sources were very reliable uh, when we were when we were told it, but uh, again, like that's yeah, that's no, your Paul, news. Paul told us that to, Paul told us that when we were at Cage Conflict class. Oh, was it? Yeah. I, I actually, I, 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 reliable you know then. What? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I take it all back. Very unreliable then. Uh, <laughs> and then look, obviously we knew we knew Paris was was the was the deadline for something yeah. to get booked, and like we would love yeah. seeing you on that card, and didn't happen. But look. This this is this is this is one for fans to definitely make sure they check out because this is a this is going to be the last one. The next has to be the UFC. Paul, have you had any confirmation from the UFC that that's that's the case? No, absolutely not. I mean, that's just not how the game works. Mm. Um, and I am not going into this fight even if I finish this guy's most spectacular way possible. I'm still not expecting a UFC contract. Mm. I'm not expecting anything anymore. You know, whatever happens, happens. Mm. And as I said, as long as I can fucking get better every single week, yes, competition is important next week. As long as I'm getting better, the truth always prevails and I will explode onto the scene. And whenever I do, then they'll see the level. Mm. Paul, do, do you think, like, obviously you're not looking beyond Jan, but, um, do you think, like, surely now you must be, like, thinking about becoming champ champ in Cage Warriors as well. Like, Yeah, well, I mean, that was my... 
of course that was what I wanted to do initially. Um, George Hardwick. Well, what happened there, Paul? Because like, uh, we're really surprised they don't. They, there's no title fight for the main event, and it's only three rounds as well. It's not fight. Yeah, I mean, you tell me. I mean, turns out George Hardwick's actually a bitch. Um, he was talking all this shit in interviews, and uh, believe it or not, it was by pure chance an interview came up in my suggested feed one time in, on Instagram. It was just him saying, "Oh, I'm an active champ. I'm an active champ." And then you've got unactive champs, people who don't want to fight, like Paul Hughes. He's like, I take fights in three or four weeks notice. And I was like, oh, well, this is perfect ammunition for me. I was like, let's go then. Let's go in a few weeks time. Let's mm-hmm. go in a month's time. Let's do it. And of course, didn't reply to any of DMs. As I say, it turns out he is a bitch. Um, and then they offered us Jan. And we were like, yeah, of course, we'll do Jan. I mean, as as Cage Warrior stated, it was a number one contender fight. So, of course, to us, that's when an interim belt is on, whenever a mm-hmm. champion can't defend. Uh, and was refusing to defend so they decided that it wasn't for an interim belt we still tried to get it for five rounds they decided it was only for free and that's just what it was unfortunately we pushed for it but it is what it is it's still a fight and i'm gonna smash this comp yeah there was no opportunity to fight for your title against harry hardwick was there oh i mean yeah cage warriors would have liked me to defend featherweight but i'm moving up to lightweight now so that's all featherweights behind me now look Okay, so you're you're absolutely finished with featherweight. You're just moving on yeah. lightweights the rest of your career. Yeah, and then heavyweight, obviously. And of course, <laughs> any belts. Yeah. 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 Once someone has a, <laughs> once someone has a shiny belt, uh, Paul Hughes wants it. And then obviously, Paul, like we we did see uh, uh, ha- having a lovely meal with uh, Conor McGregor and Ian Gary. Uh, he's obviously someone who's done Cage Warriors champ champ status. Uh, what was that conversation like? Yeah, I mean, surreal, man, surreal. I mean, when it comes to the double champ thing, like McGregor was fucking buzzing for it. You know, he was saying, oh, you got to come down right after you get the two belts, get down into the Black Forge. But at the time, we had good reason to believe that it would have been George because he was talking all this mm. shit. Yeah. But it didn't happen. Um, but nah, it was a surreal experience. It was, it was, I don't even know where to begin. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, Paddy, were you a bit upset you didn't get the nod? <laughs> uh, his head doesn't crazy. fit inside the black forge <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Paddy obviously uh, you know Foy Academy Ireland has created what three Cage Warriors champions now uh, and like also none of them were ever beaten for the belt either um, so that's uh, something to look at as well uh, how, how safe hands do you feel of, of uh, being in under uh, Pat and Chanda Open Fight Academy Ireland? Because uh, they just keep on creating champion after champion at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm in very safe hands. Even from the start of my career, I've had like so much trust in the team. You know, like I always trust the process. Like whenever I got up uh, at the start, the best people had all always been doing it for years. And uh, so whenever I started training and started fighting, I always knew, like I was like, I'll give myself 10 years and of training consistently up here and I'll see where I'm at mm. because I've seen that they were constantly producing like world class fighters so mm. I've always trusted the process and trusted in my team and uh, I think things are going to plan now at this point how, in my career you know how many years in are you now Paddy? seven so three more and we'll see what's up <laughs> <laughs> um, and Paddy uh, obviously Paul Hughes is one of the leaders in that gym Um what sort of uh, attributes does he have or what sort of things do you look at have and look up and be like, I want to emulate that? I mean, Paul is like one, probably the most well-rounded fighter that I know or have shared the mats with. Like, sometimes you're on the mats and there's like phenomenal wrestlers or phenomenal strikers or like, but Paul is literally world-class mm. in every aspect. Like, there's no one who can come and train with Paul and say like, oh, I got him there though or... Uh, if you do this to him it works like there's literally nothing like that and I think it's just because he's so obsessed like if someone was to get him with something in the gym I have no doubt that he would be in the house thinking why that happened and coming up straight away trying to correct it you know what I mean it just comes down to being obsessed like he's the hardest worker on the mat he's consistent and even like um, way back in the day whenever I remember he would be going in the academy one like training with Donner he was still a fucking workhorse then so he's just always been a workhorse and obsessed like you know what I mean like it's inevitable for him to be or for him to get to where he wants to be you know what I mean but um, he's oh that's all the, all, the, all, the, that's all, the, all the credit you're getting there Paul <laughs> yeah, so I'm here, but yeah he's just so well rounded 
Yeah. Uh, and Paddy, then, Paddy, you're you're wrong. also over in you were also over in Thailand <laughs> as well in the build for in the during this training camp. Uh, yeah. How did you get on over there as well? Yeah, it got on very well. I mean, it was good, like getting to move about with different bodies and uh, different styles, and uh, uh, it actually gave me a lot of confidence, like sharing the sharing the mat with different people. Because sometimes, whenever you're training with the same guys all the time, you kind of like know, um, like what the other person's going to do or what they're best at, you know. So, and then everyone in our gym is actually tough as fuck. So you think that you're not capable of some things that you are whenever you go with people in other gyms. You know what I mean? So there were some things that wouldn't work in a million years in our gym and they were working very well against people, you know, like you hadn't trained with before. But uh, yeah, it was just good to get out there and uh, start building the fitness before I came back and finished off my cabin home. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's always good to mix it up. I think we saw you over there with John Mitchell as well. So he won up. Yeah, John Mitchell, John Mitchell is a fucking beast to be fair. Like mm. when I went over there thinking oh fuck hopefully there's a, there'll be a couple of big wrestlers you know all these russians and all like just just go over and see what the crack is but john mitchell was one off if not the hardest count on the mats like he was just there going the fucking war every day with like top level ufc fighters and he was just going flying at them like i have a lot of time for john mitchell he's a legend and i think that he'll clean up in this pfl final here in december the cork horse box Core course box. Don't, don't get it. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Don't get. Don't get it wrong. Uh, Paul, Lads, I just what, want. To, what's it like at the moment as well around the gym with Reese? Uh, also, shout out to Reese's MMA fight project is on this Saturday, the seventh. Was that to me? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Paul. Oh, I mean, come on, Reese is my boy. Like you know, Reese is the man, uh, an inspiration for me. His story. I mean, to come back from where he came from with the UFC to come back and his run. Obviously, we didn't get the result the last time, but I mean, we're only we're back in there, you know. We're back, mm. and he's gonna make the adjustments, and it could be coming in hot for the next fight. And yeah, Reese is a man, you know. Everybody loves Reese, like he's just a great guy, and it's a, it's so good to just have him full time at the fight academy. Like it's a, it's amazing. Yeah, he's he's easily one of my right. favorite fighters. Anyway, I I, yeah. I love the chap to bits, and uh, obviously he has a bambino on the way as well. So shout out Reese. What, what about yourself, Royce, Paddy? He's called. Paddy, what about yourself? Have, having a big body there as well, like Reese. Yeah, mate, it's been unbelievable having having Reese in the gym. Like, uh, Reese has forced me to level up so much because I've been doing uh, a lot of rounds with him, and the uh, the pace that he can hold over five minutes, like, I really feel like I'm going to go in and put a pace on this guy. And um, a lot of it is down to my rounds with Reese. Like, it took me a lot of time to build like uh, the engine for three fives. Um, before maybe it would have been only like going really hard on the fitness whenever I had fights, but the James Webb fight made me understand that you need to be building engines whenever you don't have fights lined up and then picking, you know, like whenever you start training for fights. Yeah. And uh, I know that if I can keep up the pace of Reese, Reese, sorry, that I can push the pace with anyone because the guy just does not stop for five minutes. So he has forced me to level up massively. And uh, it is unreal to have Reese around the gym, to be honest. Shout out to Reese. Big race. <laughs> Big race. Uh, Big race. race. T- tell us this. Uh, I, I want you both, uh, I'll start with yourself, Paul, to tell us someone in the gym who's maybe the unsung hero of the gym, uh, whether it be a coach or on the mat, who, who's not getting the credits they deserve in Fight Academy Ireland? Um, I'm just going to be honest with the first one that came to mind, and it's because I just spent two weeks with him in uh, South Florida, is Corey McLaughlin. I mean, this guy is, this guy was piecing up everybody in america like <laughs> like He's genuinely like condition as well. he is he is the next big thing like he is i'm telling you he was piecing up ufc guys in the gym and the man's still fighting amateur he is an absolute phenom a fellow, fellow dairy man like myself so that was the first name that came to mind so that's the one i'm gonna give some in the water there what about yourself paddy uh i think james hughes i've oh, been yeah. doing a lot of a lot of rounds and a lot of work with james hughes uh and the he, just how how quickly he picks things up and how eager he is to learn. He also has a great body type um, for MMA. But yeah, I think James Hughes and Corey McLaughlin are definitely going to be two fjord, stars in the future, no doubt. Yeah, both yeah. lads will be on Cage Conflict Eleven, Ross. So make sure to tune into that. Yeah, absolutely. I actually saw. I remember seeing James Hughes at Cage Conflict. I think whatever one tier and fought Max Lally on. Can't remember what that is. Yeah. Probably probably knowing it. Uh, yeah. And uh, my God, he looked great in that fight. Uh, I was watching Maurice and Reese's <laughs> fucking guys as well. 
So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, two amongst many, two amongst many. Um, oh, for uh, sure. There's many more. That, yeah. You need to get you need to get a bigger bigger gym set up there. But that's that's probably on the time. way as well. Uh, la- lads, like, how many people are you going to be bringing down to Dublin on the fourteenth of October to the RDS? Because uh, when you lads are fighting on cards, people come out to watch. I have no idea. Uh, to be honest, like, <laughs> people like, but I can't tell. Everyone, <laughs> everyone. I mean, how much do do you know how much the RDS holds? I think it's, it's big two or three thousand right? or something. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully I there's we buses can... coming from Derry and there's buses coming from uh, Foy Academy as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we're, we're going to have a crowd. We're going to have a damn good crowd. Don't be worrying about that. For sure. No, crowd, normally, the, normally the civilians don't get a shout out on the on the podcast, but shout out to Johnny. <laughs> he's, uh, he's some man for yes. a range, range yeah. of the parties. Oh, We've been to a Paul Hughes party. So uh, <laughs> big time, yeah. yeah. There'll be there'll be another one. There'll be another big pre-party beforehand in a bar close by. So keep posted for that and afterwards <laughs> as well. Hopefully do you, do you... this time with it being at home, I can join the after party. So yeah. we'll see. You want to see? You want to see your last party that we were at? None. Baz is signing autographs and everything. Was at it. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ross are getting photographs with people. So shout out, shout out to the the photo cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like with the posters, everything. It was unreal. Nah, here we do it different, bro. And we're only beginning as well. So yeah. Excited to see where that goes in the next few years. No, absolutely, it's it's, it's going it's going to be insane. Um, guys, what do you expect co- come fight night? Um, because uh, now obviously you're going to expect to win, but what sort of performance are you guys looking to put on? Uh, come fight night. Go ahead, Paddy. I'm expecting to put this guy away. You know, every fight that I'm going into, I'm training to take people out. I don't want to go in there and win a decision. I want to go in there and set traps, and make reads and take people out and that's exactly what i plan on doing in this french guy i think it's another um step up for me but with that my training has stepped up and i'm ready to go in and put a pace on him until he breaks so expect a finish from me yeah just, sorry just where you get yourself paul paddy do you expect to get get out again this year or would this be the last fight of the year well we'll see how uh clean i get out of this one you know i'm not looking mm-hmm. past this fight though yeah there okay. is no tomorrow from the 14th and what about yourself, Paul? Is it, uh, will we see you early next year or will we see you again No, this I year? want to be back in there again for sure at the end of the year. I want activity now, so I'm going to go straight fucking through this cunt next week. I'm going to see him. I'll show him who's fucking strong whenever I'm elbowing his fucking face through the canvas. It's Let's big go! Yan. Big <laughs> fucking yan. You know what? I'm actually glad that he's talking a bit of shit, you know? Um, <laughs> not, that I need, not that I need any more motivation, but it just gives me something extra there you know and i just know when i'm putting a hole through his head he'll know who's fucking strong then so whenever <laughs> i batter him next week then we'll see what's next whatever happens happens i'll take it from there yeah paul are you taking those uh those comments personally when he's when he's uh trying to insult you no i don't take anything personal um fighting is not personal to me in any way but i do use it as competition and yeah mm. Yeah, that's just where we wrap things up, uh, Paul. You usually name every fight. Uh, you usually call it something. What? Uh, what is this? What is this chapter called? First round knockout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. I can't wait to see it. You're, you're hardly, you're hardly doing uh, the pods over there with Henry Hoof for the good of your health. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> let, let's let's see some of that uh, Henry Hoof kickboxing and uh, <laughs> look, we've seen head kicks from you before. So uh, who knows? Who knows? It's, it's going to be an exciting one. Big news, Hughes is back, baby. Can't wait to see it. Paul, thanks a million for joining us. Paddy, thanks a million for joining us. Really sure. appreciate the time. We'll yeah. see you there in Dublin. Uh, we'll have the finest pair of Energize glasses we have available for, for you. Don't worry uh, about it. And Shando. And, and Pat. Shando. And Shando. And Paul McClurkin as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> loves them. He loves them. But uh, <laughs> thanks a million for the time. We appreciate you. If you are watching home, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And as always... Stay energized. Energize shot. Whoop the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.